streak was broken today. He's now 6-1 and one in Pro League. He's, he's got a lot behind. of fans. Yeah, he's got a huge amount of fans here in the studio. These generic Green Wings girls are still here, as well as the boys. They're all cheering for generic Green Wings. And this guy now falling behind TYB in 6-1, but he still has a huge win record. Here's Solky, the guy that stopped that win uh, streak. Solky got a lot of fans behind him as well. Really, really strong Zerg from Moonjing Stars, moving into SK Telecom T1 and looking solid right now. He does not look nervous, he does not look tense. This looks like he's ready to do it again and take that win, that second win, take the 2-0 over Maru today, putting him at 6-2. He wants to win twice. And I think what Soki is hoping for is that same mech play, because he's already beaten it once. He's probably feeling like he can do it again. Looks like we're gonna start right away here on the King Sejong Station, the rematch, the ace match between Maru and Soki here at the 2014 Pro League. Jin Air Green Wings against SK Telecom T1. SK Telecom. The snow is falling as we begin this game. Up here in the top left. Jin Air's last hope, the Terran player whose win streak got broken. This is Maru. And his opponent to the bottom right in the blue, it's Sulky. Such a great Zerg. And funny as it is, in Seoul today, we had a ton of snow. It's probably still snowing actually as we speak. I can't tell you guys for sure because I'm inside. I checked the weather. It said it was clear. Could be clear. Just curious but it was snowing. It was really slushy. Like I mentioned before, my, my shoes are still off because my socks were pretty wet. I wore my sneakers today. I, I, I did the wrong thing. You did the wrong thing. I did not wear sneakers, and as a result, my, my feet are quite warm. So I envy you. Well, there's always tomorrow. If it snows again, you can make the right choice. The Zerg Sulky sends out a drone scout to be careful, to be safe because this is the match that decides everything. This is the ace match. Yeah. Morrow has cheese in the past. I love this, He just this, wants actually. to make sure. Yeah, I mean, this is what you got to do. Especially on a two-player map. You know where he is. You can get information quickly by getting over there. It's not too early. It right. wasn't like the super, like super early drone scout or anything, but he's going to get a lot of information. That's a cute plushie. Yeah, I bet that Zerlin can become a Baneling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it can become a Baneling. <laughs> do it. It became a Baneling. That's a true Zergling. That's a Zergling of a player that's never going to go hive. <laughs> There's that Baneling plushie. Its transformation is complete. Now, meanwhile, the scout is complete. Hatchery is planted here for Sulky. And uh, the drone, did it leave? It did. So it's not actually going to get trapped in the main base or anything like that. But he identifies what build he's up against. He wants to send that drone back to get that extra mining. And the Reaper wants to, of course, identify the gas timing, how much has been mined, and what Sulky's plan is from the start. We saw Sulky poke a little bit with roaches in our first game. And he traded okay, but ended up being uh, kind of an even exchange where Maru took some damage but was able to recover quite well. Yeah. And right. Sulky had to, to go into mutas right away. Sulky was able to get uh, a bunch of those SCVs, but eventually the Banshee, as well as a bunch of those Hellions and Marines, were able to eventually take them out. It was a, a good even number of nine. It did stop mining at the second for a while. Indeed. Spawning pool finishes. We'll see two queens. That's why he banked up those minerals. Two queens and four Zerglings coming out here for Sulky. The command center dropped at that hourglass expansion here for Maru. And just patiently going to go ahead and drop his factory down. This is something the Overlord has already scouted. And he's going to make two of these Reapers here. He yeah. starts that factory. He gets a second Reaper this time, so he's going to have a little bit more of a persistent scout, and this is also going to maybe force more Zerglings to be made. Um, the thing is, with Queens alone, he's able to do a lot defensively, but when there are two Reapers plus Hellions, the third base gets a little bit scary to take, and uh, it's hard to keep your drone alive, and even your Queen spreading creep have a little bit more trouble, because the firepower of a Reaper is, is actually okay, plus the fact that they heal. You know, if a Hellion takes the damage instead, it's not going to heal, it needs to be repaired, but a Reaper will just actually regenerate automatically in Heart of the Swarm, and as we're about to see possibly on screen, not if he fights the thing again. 
only recover out of combat. And look and at this. Wow, he shows it. Yeah, that is scouted by that Overlord. And as we were mentioning, that third commander comes up here. So three CCs very early on for Maru, and he's not afraid to hide it. Not afraid to show it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does, he does uh, of course. Uh, he's not afraid to let the world know. He has a third CC, and he's proud of it. He's coming out. He wants the world to know. He's a guy who loves three CCs. Yeah. He enjoys three CCs quite a bit. And If you enjoy three CCs, that's all the better for you. Yeah, no you know one's judging if, for you. If you want to double expand, just just don't worry about all the Zerg haters who are going to roach attack you. We have bio. See? This is what I like. I like to see this... Changes up his style, and Sulky starts a Roach Warren again. But I think this time it's just more of a defensive measure, where he wants to uh, ward off these attacks. And then uh, if he identifies Mech is coming, that's going to be a different story. But he has to see it first before he commits to Roaches. Third Hatchery is started, which is really nice for him, because it means that the drone can't be picked off by these few units down here, the Reaper and the two Hellions. What happened to the second Reaper? Where is he at? Uh, he's going around the right side right now. He's going to oh, jump yeah, the base. Oh, yeah, he's going to scout. He goes into the main base. In the main base, the Reaper comes in. I got eye like, eyes like a hawk, man. I'm, like, yeah, looking you, into this screen. You saw that. You saw it faster than our observer did. Fuse early is being traded against here. And uh, the Reaper actually tries to go all the way through. That's the wrong way to go. Look at this. Two NG days. He's going to be getting that 1-1 one, one, and that 2-2 two, two, and 3-3. Three, three, those fast upgrades. Yeah. Stim halfway done. And only six roaches being made. That's a very defensive number. With six roaches, no amount of Hellions or uh, Reapers is going to pressure his, his mineral line here at the third base or his creep anymore even. One roach is not enough here, though. That roach... Uh, he's, a, he's a hero. He's trying to be a hero for the Zerg army right now. Reaper's going to hold the watchtower, get a little bit more vision about what Sulky is doing. Hellions chilling out over here meanwhile. Across the way. And the thing about these upgrades is they're slightly ahead for Maru, but as the game goes longer, they get further and further ahead. The Roach is actually going across the map for an attack here. I think he's just trying to make sure that the third command center isn't landed. And if it is, he's going to give it a few problems. These bunkers up here, though, Maru is ready for anything. Not even just the, the first few Roaches that come out, but also a big Roach push, he'd be ready for that too. I love seeing this third command center, especially on a map like this where you can be a bit safe earlier on. You can actually just get those extra mules, you can get the extra SCVs, and then when you're ready to move it out, you can move it out. That's true. You can be out on the map with your Hellions and your Reapers, you can be out and about scouting, making sure you're not going to go down to any crazy Zerg pressure at the same time. It's actually starting to work away at this Roach here. The Roach is coming for the third base. The Hellions want to identify how many Roaches there are. And now he sees, okay, barely any Roaches. He might even salvage his bunkers right away now. He's seen this. He's like, oh, okay. They're just trying to put this pressure on me. And I like that by Sulky. Because behind this, he's droning up. He's getting his upgrades out. He's got his lair finished. He starts his Baneling Nest. He can actually go right into 2-2 as soon as his 1-1 uh, one, one is done. Because he has that lair. And he can start a Spire Tomb, too. He's almost at 200 gas. Well, that's actually more of the long tab. But anyways, he can start the Spire very soon, regardless. He's almost at 200 minerals. Yeah. And that's what he needs, plus the gas, to make a Spire. And there it is. There it is. See? that's how It all just works out. Yeah. Macro Hatch started in the main as well. 18 Zerglings. Getting that plus one to attack. Of course, he's going to want that for the Zerglings and the Banelings. These Zerglings here are just trying to find an opening. And with the second wall set up here at the natural, he's not going to be able to do anything there. The third base is a place he could want to come in and harass. He does send just a few Zerlings over. Might get an SCD or two, but the Hellions come in. Oh no, this wall is down, and Soki, this is a game changer. He comes around here. He's catching this bio force. He's relatively unprotected. He only has one bunker. So many SCDs in danger as well. He could actually try. No, nope, the second bunker actually is loaded now, and he's not going to be able to get any more damage done, but he could actually escape now with his Lings, and that's what he does. Yeah, he does escape there. And while this is going on, he is getting a bunch more upgrades back at his head. At his house, I at his house. said. <laughs> he's got upgrades back, back at his, his house. house. He's upgrading, you know, he's renovating, he's getting a new room, and he's going to have a pool table in it. <laughs> Meanwhile, at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, at his, at his house over there, his little Zerg hive, and his little Zerg uh, lair. At this point, it's not yet a hive. Yeah, he's, he's getting, getting those upgrades. upgrades, and he is banking. That spire's about to finish, and there it goes. 
I think that was about eight mutas. Yeah, eight or nine. Fifty Zerlings on the map right now. And the army of Maru moves out. He wants to get some harassment done. He actually traded okay against those those lings and roaches that came into his natural, so he knows, okay, if you're trying to drone after you committed that larva, this could be a good opportunity for me to do damage. If there are mutalists on the map, I can fight those directly if you don't have bailing support. He has to be careful, though, because the mutas are out. And with 52 zerlings on the map, if he gets surrounded, he's going to have to rely on those medevacs to run away. But with mutas here, he's going to not have a whole lot of space to work with. He gets surrounded here. He picks up into the medevacs. He has to get away, though. He's not too far away, and the mutas are not going to be able to chase him down. But that's a scary moment for him. But again, good for Sulky because he shuts this harassment down without really taking any losses. Yeah, he shuts it down. He buys more time for him to get that fourth up and running. Right now, Maru just on those three bases. The 2-2 two -two upgrades for Sulky are slightly ahead of Maru, which is really important in this matchup. You always want to be able to stay at least even with the Terran player. Yeah, he's also getting the air upgrades. He's trying to get plus one right now. A few Hellbats coming out. Maru even adding a second factory right now, which could be for a numerous amount of things. Thors, Hellbats, uh, Widow Mines, and even just regular Hellions. Probably not, but he could even siege tanks. This small force will trade against depots, which is kind of annoying tomorrow and will supply block him. But uh, gas for minerals trade, they're not the most efficient. And Maru actually adds a center tower. There's no way he's gonna get caught off guard by something like that ever again now that he has that center tower up. And a big heavy commitment to Banelings here again for Solki, knowing this very strong bio force is coming down towards his expansions. A scan, revealing those tumors. And actually his Banelings not on the best angle. The Hellions get a good lineup on him and the splitting here for Maru is insane. But does he have it up? I'm not so sure. Takes a big hit actually on those Marines to the right as well. Seems like he has a lot of uh, met a mutilist to try to clean this up, but eventually the army of Maru does bunch up together and force those away. Reinforcements coming in, trying to make more Zerglings, more Banelings, more Mutas as well. More, 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 that's what he wants. And takes a supply lead here. That was a decent trade uh, for Sulky, I feel. Maru's reinforcements really caught in, uh, catching him off guard. But then he's still got a decent Banelink hit on those, like you said, so it worked out okay for him. Maru keeping his medevacs, which is important because that's where his gas gets depleted. Mineral's never really a problem. Um, yep. I mean, with mules, you're going to always have a decent mineral economy. Yeah, and you can make marines and marauders so much faster than you can make medevacs out of one starport. That's really the bigger deal. He's not running out of gas either. It's just that his mineral income and, and his ability to make marines and marauders is just so much easier. Plus three started instantly here, but look at that. Like the station pit. Sulky is not playing the Peter Pan style. He's throwing up right now. He's definitely growing up, but with the Mutalists not in position, these mainlings were morphing. If he splits well, but actually getting a lot of hits onto those Marines. I mean, what? He literally picked up his units and then dropped them behind the Banelings to, to do his splitting. But still, he has a lot of medevacs, but not a lot underneath him. He needs a little bit more time to rebuild that army that he lost earlier before he can be aggressive like this, or he's just trading too inefficiently. He doesn't have a fourth base. He has a fourth command center. He just lifts right now. He's going to try to make a plant area up on that high ground, which is a great location for him to expand. I really like his choice here. I was watching that attack by Maroon. I thought it could have been good because the Mutalists were out on the east side of the map, and the Banelings were morphing over here. But with the lack of splitting and the kind of weird into the medevac and back down on the ground to die play here, actually losing a bunch of Mutalists here. I think there was about four little mistake here out of Zolki. This Thor is about to pop out. But it doesn't mean that uh, before it is, the Mulas can't do damage. Cannot stick around to kill the E-Base, but kills a few Harvesters. Gets away, now goes into the third base. And Maru, not able to run over there with his Marines. No turrets. Only one on the right side, out of position. Yep. Thor, though, with warding Mutas, this off. With Mutas out this long, he should have at least a bunch of turrets in these mineral lines. Five going up here. This is a very different game than the fantasy versus true game that we saw. Not just because he's going to hide, but just how the game is gone. There's a lot more opportunities for Soki to actually tech to that hive. He doesn't have to feel stuck on a composition. He's trying to pick off one of these armories, or rather one of these eBays. And Maru is forgetting his armor upgrade right now, which is going to come back to bite him perhaps later on, because the 3-3 will be started as soon as that hive is done. Mark my words, Soki knows that he needs these upgrades, and he's going to go for them right away. He already has plus one for his Mutas, plus two is halfway done. Hive is done. Now let's see how long it takes him to start 3-3. I don't think it's going to be very long. Plus one for the Thors, almost done for Maru, who also has plus uh, three for his bio. There's the three, three. There's the Adrenal Glands, instantly getting all those upgrades. Yeah, a little drop in here. Sulky's gonna have to come back and defend that. But actually, with a push down here in the middle, he wants to defend that, not splitting so well, but some of those Banelings going onto that Thor. Yep, Marauder up the front here to tank a little bit, and the Thor doing so much damage so quickly. He needs this reinforcement group. 
The Muta's on the right side doing so much damage. The splitting here, excellent this time for Maru. And suddenly Solki finds himself in a very, very scary position, trying to hold this hatchery. I think he's gonna have to cancel it for sure. A few more bio units coming over here to reinforce this attack. But oh no, losing several of his, uh, several of his SMEs. He's not the best trade here for Solki, but still, it's great he had that bio at home. Forced to cancel on the hatchery, needs to go home. He needs to repair that medevac and or the Thor. Yeah, and we have an Ultraless Cavern coming out here. Yep, that's the Hive Tech of choice. It really synergizes well with the 3-3 three, three upgrades he has for his Zerlings. He scans forward, says, Oh my god, that's way too much for me to handle right now. I can't commit to this right now. I need to move back. 14 more Banelings going. The armor upgrade, pretty competitive with the 3-3 three, three upgrades here for Solki. But in the Zerg perspective, if your 3-3 three, three is finishing at the same time as your opponent's game in armor, you're feeling pretty comfortable. You feel like, wow, I really rushed those 3-3s three, out. Uh, I'm in an okay spot when it comes to upgrades. And I'm only going to be... No, really, he's not really going to be... He's a whole set of attack upgrades behind him, but he's not behind the armor. And when they when they finish, 3-3 three, three versus 3-3, three, three, a good place to be uh, yep. for his Urk. Sending his Mutas in here, trying to counteract the harass that Moro was doing to his natural. Going to want to come in here maybe pick off some add-ons. That would be a great choice. He wants to just get in and out. Takes out that reactor on Way that Way too airport. many Marines, though. Losing several Mutas, but hitting that reactor limits the medevac production quite significantly. One more Thor in production, and he's just trying to trade as well as he can here with this bio. This, these little drops, he's trying to pick off things. The Medivac's getting intercepted here, almost. Turrets are ready, though. This planetary, no turrets. Where's the bio? It's coming up the ramp right now to defend. Meanwhile, he picks off a queen. And those Mulas being chased away, but the Marines uncontested here. Nothing is stopping them from ripping this drone apart, this drone line apart, that is to say. 2-3 Marines in your middle of the line right now is not what you want. Definitely it's going to take not. out these drones so, so fast. It's going to now drop in the main. Yep, could actually try to kill that spawning pool. Adrenal glands are already done, so he's not going to be able to stop that. And it looks like he's just going to fight these queens, knowing that uh, they're the reason why he's not going to be able to get out with the medevac. Now that the, the queens are gone, he could have saved it, but he's meanwhile harassing elsewhere. Does lose that dropship full of units. 106 zones on the map, only one Ultralis as he is maxed out. He needs a little bit more before he gets units to trade, before he can actually get more. One Thor goes down, the second one holding strong. He targets the Ultralis with that Thor. There's no splitting here, and suddenly... Suddenly, Maru drops 135 supply. That engagement was terrible by him. Doesn't want to lose his Mutalist, though. He has to fly away. Yeah, flies the Mutalist away. Meanwhile, another attack coming towards his natural. He just keeps dropping, even dropping a Thor on this drone line, forcing the units back. He's going to pick up and leave. He needs to buy time to remax that army, but this is great for Sulky. Can he save this hatchery? The Thor doing so much damage. He does not save the hatch. And Maru gets away. So Maru just constantly trading blow for blow against these hatcheries. This huge group of Banelings wants to trade against that planetary. And nothing, nothing that Morrow can do will stop this. Wants to go in and actually goes for the mineral line and then goes for the planetary. Gets, gets down. Both. Yep. And, uh, and that's that's a good trade. Even though he did lose his hatchery, you know, he did kill a significant amount of that army. You can even see it in the supply right now. There's no answer for the Ultralis. There are six Marauders and one Siege Tank. No Widow Mines. You know, if he had Widow Mines, they could ignore the armor and, and maybe help out. I feel like if, if Solki knew this, he'd be a little bit more aggressive. He'd actually start attacking to eliminate the reconstruction of that base. He's also concerned about this drop play. This Mulus will be able to push this back, though. They've got plus two attack. Kills the medevac. Will kill the Marines. Certainly support us here as well. He just keeps trading a little bit to make more Ultralis. And he knows that Maru's army right now cannot contend with Ultralis. He's trying to remax with more siege tanks being produced. He's about to have plus two for that. And more Marauders. But still, Maru is desperate right now. He needs... Almost a miracle. He needs to turn this game around some way, somehow. He needs some kind of incredible miracle here. He has no fourth base. And look at this little harass over here while he moves the bulk of his army in here at the fourth. His fourth could go down again. Chooses to back off for now once to set the Banelings first. Yep, Banelings go first here. He's a little bit concerned about going up the ramp, but now he commits Siege Tank at the back here. A few more Siege Tanks trying to join in. Morrow with excellent splitting. Goes down the ramp. Tries to get a concave here on those Ultras. It may be too much, though. Ultra is kiting back as best as they can. A decent bio force here will push the Ultras back. And Maru, this is not a miracle. This is him turning this game around with really nice control. One more Ultras. Can he kill it? No. So low. It might be transfused now. Then the command center finishes. This is great for Maru. And Soki's bank is depleted a little bit, but he's going into Infestors. Knowing that with Infestors, there is no kiting. Infestors and Ultras, the worst enemy of any bio force. Sensor tower to go down here, two turrets, a few of those SCVs, and the Mulus will escape. There's nothing Maru could do to chase here. I love the Infestors here, actually. This is a big drop, though. He's going to try to come in here, 
What is he going to go for? Is he going to go for the middle of the line? Is he going to try to target some tech building? Looks like he just wants to come near, get that queen first. Could go for the infestation pit as well if he chooses to. Uh, at this point, it looks like he's just going to have to get out. Might kill the hatch. And the Ultralis is still alive with 24 hit points, very low. Gets the hatch, which is a big hit to the larva production here for Sulky. For him, that base wasn't really mining anymore, so he's not too concerned about losing the hatchery per se. It's just the larva. The larva is the problem. Two more Thors being raided right now. Thors, if they sit at the back because they do have a great amount of range and they do do damage quite quickly, are okay against not only the Ultralis, but really nice against the Mutas. Run by over here. Not going to do too much, just going to be a, a bit of a mineral and larva sink. He tries to, to distract Maru, but Maru cleans us up no problem. Yeah, I mean, it's decent while he tries to get his investors out. He's also making four mutas. And Maru has depleted the bank of Solki again, but his own bank is gone. He needs to just continue to be efficient with his units, efficient with his trading. The investors are looking to put an end to that. With, uh, with all these investors, if he gets fungals off on this Bioforce and the Ultras connect just one time, that's all Sulky's going to need. Yeah, it's really about those fungals. He is getting these mutas into the main base as well, doing a ton of damage here so far, picking up these straight units. Wants to get two of these medevacs. Now he has to get out of here. Doesn't want to take too much damage from those Thors. Yeah, the Thors just chasing in the medevacs here, but he's not able to connect and, and kill the mutalists. That's what's important. Damaging them doesn't matter because in Heart of the Swarm, they have that increased regeneration. You can see the look of frustration on Mario's face. He really wants to get back in this game. He secured the base at the top right, which is really, really important. That extra mineral income is what he needs to make these Marauders. And uh, this, this medevac will go down. Trade's okay. He's just keeping the Zerg off his back while he remaxes. He's trying to slowly but steadily this remax. Is, this is what he's been doing since the beginning of the mid game. I mean, he's been all over the base of Solki. He went into the main, the natural, the third, even the fourth. Took out the the fifth base even while he was doing this and a big run by meanwhile gets zerglings in the main base this is going to be hard to deal with yep and this is this is really really bad for Mars losing so much of his infrastructure here zerglings in the main base killing his depots his add-ons he cannot afford to lose these he cannot afford to remake those and if he sends his army towards his main base the attack that's coming towards his planetary is going to be a big problem but he does not fall for the beat it's just a question of numbers here brennan i'm not sure if he has enough ultra is charging through Bungles go down, this bio, half the bio is out of position, and there goes that Planetary. Planetary's down, great Bungles, he needs some more though, he's gonna be forced to back off, but look at this main base right now of Maru, he doesn't have enough buildings, you see the look on his face, licking his lips, he oh, cannot Sulky. enjoy this game. Sulky wants to go 2-0 against him today, bringing his perfect 6-0 down to a 6-2 and winning the match for SK Telecom, so they can tie up with SKT, or with KT rolls for that is, and he's trying to catch these Mews, he can't. Maru down to 22 harvesters. His gas income is 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 basically zero. He doesn't really need it, uh, you know, as much as he needs minerals to make marines. But he does need some gas to make marauders. He needs some gas to make a few thors if he wants to add those in. He's 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 down to almost nothing here, and he can't even afford to add refineries. He cannot afford refineries. And when you're in that situation as Terran, and you see the Zerg army that is not going to let you keep this base, what can you be possibly thinking? The lift on the orbital, the Muta's gonna chase it down, the last of the army is gonna come in here. Yeah, he splits his units for the last time. SCB is leading the charge at the front to try to tank damage. Infestors with fungals, there's that last fungal he needs! The Ultras will clean up the last of that army, and that is going to be it! So it will take the two of tomorrow and win the ace match. GG. The rematch by Sulky taking out Maru twice, bringing his win streak down to a 6-2. SKT, the winner of this match. Third ace match we've had in two days. Incredible games. And with this, SK will tie KT. They are both now at a 5-1 with plus eight indicator. Exactly tied bouncing back and forth both teams against their opponents winning the ace match and winning by plus